What's up guys, this is Understand Jiu Jitsu with DCD. In today's match, we have Gustavo Batista versus Jackson Sousa. Now, rather than going through a full match, this time we're actually just gonna go through one clip, but in this clip, there's a lot of action and a lot of really amazing pressure passing from Gustavo Batista, which is kind of the gonna be the main focus of today's little study here, okay? So let's get right into it. Us. So we're gonna start the match here in close guard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you all how Gustavo Batista and the majority of the Atos competitors, including myself, uh, I used to train at Atos and I've trained with Gustavo and I've, I've met Jackson as well. Both are just amazing guys. But the majority of Atos competitors uh, like to really use this, this, this kind of close guard break rather than more so traditional close guard breaks that you guys may have seen before, okay? So with this close guard break, I'll let it play through and then we'll kind of just talk about the, the concepts behind it and why it's so effective and used all the time. So let's just go back here. And so basically what, what, what Gustavo is doing in this situation is he's looking for double under, under grips on his opponent's lapels with thumb, in, with thumb on the outside and he kind of pushes it underneath the armpits here of his opponent, okay? And then he's gonna stiff arm his arms and that's gonna allow him to keep his upper body and in posture away from Jackson's attempts to kind of break that posture and get uh, Gustavo's hands to the mat, okay? So it's a really, really great close guard break and I highly suggest, especially for beginners, to, to learn this one uh, before any of the other ones, honestly, because it's just so powerful. So as you can see here, he's building up these stiff arms and that's gonna really keep uh, Jackson's ability to really break Gustavo's posture at all. And now it's very, very simple for Gustavo to just stand up and he's gonna basically put both of his knees behind the butt of Jackson and just do a squat. It's really, really uncomfortable for the lower back of your opponent if you try this close guard break. It's amazing. Another person who's very good at this close guard break is, is uh, a former training partner of mine as well. His name is Josh Hinger. He's really fantastic at this break. And basically what you do, uh, Jackson kind of releases in this situation, but against some competitors, they won't, they won't release their guard like Jackson did as you guys saw earlier. They'll, they'll, you'll have to move your hands up from these underhook or, or under the armpit grips to the pants and then you can really get extra force and then break the close guard. So that's kind of the, the close guard break that we see in this match so far. See, he just does a squat. And as we can see right away, Gustavo already starts passing with his left leg forward. Uh, and as I've mentioned in previous videos, passing with your left leg forward, especially as a beginner, it was a great idea because most, the majority of guard players on bottom um, are used to defending up against people passing with their right leg forward. So if I could go back and start jiu-jitsu all over again, I would. I wish I had started just solely passing with my left leg forward to begin with. So keep that in mind. If you're a new person in jiu-jitsu, uh, start, start thinking about passing with your left leg forward rather than right. It's just gonna make your jiu-jitsu much easier in the long run and make when you get to those high, level, uh, high levels in jiu-jitsu, It'll be so much easier to pass people's guards because everyone is just so used to, it's just the common meta, as you could call it, to people passing with the right leg forward. So let's just keep going here. So now Jackson is looking for kind of a, a De La Hiva style situation here. And he has this pant grip and he does this elevation, which is a great elevation. But why, what is really, really good about this, this positioning of Gustavo right now? Um, this is a very common position that you're gonna find yourself in, is this is called a headquarters position, okay? And in this headquarters position, we can see how Gustavo's hips are very far back from uh, Jackson's hips. This allows the elevation from the situation really, really difficult, okay? Now, if, if as we'll see here in a second, Gustavo is not gonna keep this distance here. You see this distance between uh, Jackson's thigh and Gustavo's shin. Gustavo is not gonna keep this distance and that's gonna make this elevation much easier for Jackson in the future. Okay, but just keep that in mind. If you're the person on top in a headquarters position, you really wanna create this space here between the thigh and the shin, okay? So keep that in mind. That's gonna allow you to keep your hips away and just make, make, make your life so much easier not be able to be elevated so much. But Gustavo kind of gives up this De La Hiva situation, maybe he was a little bit tired or maybe he didn't know this kind of concept. And now Jackson's in this underhook De La Hiva situation, okay? Now let's just take a quick note on how Gustavo is defending this situation. Gustavo in most situations will always control this De La Hiva side pant grip, the De La Hiva side pant grip, just like so. 
And now this is not going to allow Jackson to, to enter into the X guard, which he is a very good X guard. It's not going to allow him to circle this leg underneath Gustavo and enter into these stronger attacking positions. Now, basically, the only attacking options Jackson has from this situation is to start going for different deep half or Lucas Lepre deep half style variations, which it doesn't seem like Jackson is, is that kind of a player. So just keep in mind that this grip here that Gustavo has is defending the majority of Jackson's attempts already. So really amazing uh, choice by Gustavo of this grip. And now Jackson's just opening up the lapels. He's gonna start entering to these different De La Hiva lapel variations. Now, one thing to note about these De La Hiva lapel variations is they are good variations and very good for control, but not so much when you have your leg trapped. If your leg is trapped, you're not gonna be able to really use this position at all, okay? So in these De La Hiva lapel situations, just for beginners out there, are mainly used to attack different Barambolo attacks, okay? And Gustavo's constantly forcing these kind of size mass situations. And if you guys didn't catch that there, there's something very, very cool happened. I'm gonna let it play one more time and just see if you guys see what Gustavo attempts to do. Did you guys see this, this kind of push attempt? Now, what Gustavo was attempting to do, he was, time, he was kind of testing uh, Jackson's inner leg or his elevator leg. Now, if you can, if you can from these positions, there is a really quick, simple approach to passing this position. And basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna use your hand around your opponent's thigh and just push push that leg in between. And you'll oftentimes, you'll, you'll kind of find yourself into different really strong three quarter mount situations in which your opponent is already on the defense. And also this is another great uh, tool that you can use this kind of push in between your legs of their elevator leg to start entering into different knee cut variations to that other side okay so just keep that in mind that even that little simple uh detail there was kind of gustavo testing whether or not this pass was would work okay so that's already one pass attempt that gustavo's already done now he's entering to these different kind of side smash style passing attempts but Gust and jackson's doing an excellent job to get this elevation here and we'll we'll play this elevation one more time this is really nice to look at as well skip forward a little bit. So Gustavo's attempting, and one thing that uh, Jackson's doing very well, whenever you're being side smashed, it's a great idea to get up to this elbow, and Jackson does it very, very quick. He knows that he's in trouble. He knows that Gustavo's already trying to, trying to put pressure and smash uh, Jackson's hips to this side, and he's already gonna get up to his elbow and do this nice elevation under the near side leg of, of Gustavo, and that's gonna allow him to enter into a very strong X card position, as we'll see here in a second. So look at this beautiful elevation right into the X-card position, and Gustavo kind of accepts this. Gustavo's X-card passing, as we'll see here in a second, is very, very high level, amazing. I've trained with Gustavo so much, and playing X-card him on him is not an easy thing to do. All right, so this is a great viewpoint of this, this X-card that, that Jackson has here. And one thing to note about when Gustavo's an X-card, and myself as well, we always like to control this pant grip here. Now, why do we control this pant grip? I'll let it play a little bit more and you guys, you guys will see and understand just how effective this pant grip is. So Gustavo is just keeping his base all the way to the side. Okay, this is a perfect, perfect stopping point. Now this pant grip here that Gustavo has, and you see how as well, he's not gonna allow this foot to ever sneak out. Okay, because that would make this pant grip a little a little weaker. Now this pant grip does not allow any sort of stand up or come up or seagull sweep or, or pretty much any sort of stand up uh, attacks, which are the most common attacks from the X guard. So when you're an X guard as a beginner, or really any level, it's a great, great idea. I shouldn't even be telling you guys this, but it's a great idea um, because it'll stop a lot of my X guard attacks. But it's a great idea to grab this this pant grip, this this kind of uh, this pant grip that's on the hip, and keep it really really close to your body, and never let your opponent break that. If you can do that, you're going to be very very uh, safe from the majority of attacks from X guard. Now you'll still be a little bit susceptible to different double pant style attacks, but the majority of X guard attacks, you're going to be you're going to be safe. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And Gustavo's able to kind of rest here, as you can see, he's on his knee. He's not really too worried because he has this pant grip and he's been in this position so much, okay? Now, one thing to note, as we'll see in a second, something that Gustavo was about to do really, really well, and I'll let it play through and then, then we'll go back and, and check it out. Right there, okay. Now, this is an amazing escape from Gustavo from the single X position, which is an excellent position to have, a very strong attack, attacking position. Now, when Gustavo feels his opponent 
starting to go for these different underhook style X guard situations. So for example, uh, Jackson is just holding the heel at the moment, but he's gonna start digging in for this underhook style attack and he didn't he didn't let go of this collar. This was a mistake by Jackson. He should have let go of the collar, controlled the leg, and then gone for this underhook on the leg. But he didn't do that, okay? So as you saw a second ago, Gustavo was just able to simply pull his leg out of the X guard. So just a quick tip for both people on top and bottom, is if you're transitioning to an underhook styled X guard or doing any sort of movement to a different uh, single leg X or X, make sure that you control the top leg first or else your opponent is just gonna be able to step his leg out as Gustavo does here in a second. And Gustavo, like he does this to many, many people. He feels if they're controlling his leg or not. And if they're not, he's just gonna step out. And that's exactly what he does. Look, he just steps out, beautiful. Really, now he's pretty much out of all danger and into one of his favorite pressure passing positions, this knee cut style pressure position okay and one thing to note about his position as we'll, we'll see here in a second when the camera changes is he's constantly driving his knee forward he's also holding the sleeve grip of Jackson now this sleeve grip is gonna stop a large amount of attacks from Jackson as well he's not gonna be able to really get up or go for any single legs or even if he gets an underhook on the leg and starts going for these different style underhook uh, attacks he won't even really be able to stand up on his elbow and, and attack any sort of single leg so this this sleeve grip when you're attacking these different knee cut attacks is a great grip to have as as well now preferably Gustavo I can imagine he would prefer and myself we would prefer to have this this collar grip but it's it's more difficult to, to attain rather than this sleeve grip okay and one thing to note about Gustavo's right hand as we saw a second ago it's on the pant grip so let's see if we can get a better angle of that see it's or not anymore um, hold on one sec so it's on the pant grip. Now this pant grip here is a great option for you as you're passing these knee cut uh, positions. You grab the pant grip and you kind of do a tricep extension and that's gonna allow you to kind of escape or, or scoot past this knee shield, which is the, the biggest kind of inhibitor, I believe it's, is a good word, for you to, to not really get into a strong knee cutting position, okay? So you see how Gustav is constantly trying to push that back, constantly trying to pass that knee line of his opponent. You can see how he's even trying to square Jackson's hips up a little bit easier to make that knee line cross really important. I don't know if you guys caught that there, but Jackson attempted a very nice attack here. He, he attempted to push Gustavo's sleeve grip underneath his body. I'll stop it when it's about to happen. So right here in a second. Jackson has a collar and sleeve position. Very, very strong collar and sleeve position, as you can see. He's going to start attempting to push this underneath. And then this is the normal attack that, that you use in order to get this far side uh, X guard okay so normally you would push this underneath I actually have a recent YouTube video on this very same attack um, you push this arm underneath and you get their weight coming camera side okay and then your opponent loses his balance and has to keep continually stepping forward with this leg and then you're easily able to let go of the sleeve grip and reach for that leg but we'll see as Gustavo how he defends this attack is really really nice and I had never seen this before but what he does is he posts his hands on the mat so his base does not go too far forward this hand right here is stopping Gustavo's base and is giving him some sort of base so he doesn't have to walk this leg all the way far forward and and kind of lose balance okay so really nice defense to this position from Gustavo there and Jackson realizes it was just too hard to move the, the brick, which is Gustavo Batista. And as we can see now, Gustavo is already entering into the side smash position. Let's just look at this transition that he made. So he was attacking for the knee cut. And just as I've said before, the side smash and the knee cut are very, very close and connected positions. Now he just entered into the side smash position. Now this knee is putting pressure behind the thigh of, of Jackson and really starting to get into these strong passing positions. Okay. He's keeping constant pressure. Now, from the size position, as we can see, Gustavo's already pretty much partially over this knee, okay? Now, this is big. This is really important. If this knee were to be out in regards to if it was on this side of Gustavo's chest, this, this, this passing position that Gustavo would not be so good, okay? But because it's kind of moving more and more towards that center line of Gustavo and even moving towards that other side, as you can see, it's moving a little bit to this side. Um, it's going to be, Gustavo's going to have the ability to use his chest and really put pressure forward and uh, get into a stronger passing position or really create a really strong uh, reaction from his opponent, as we'll see here in a second. So Jackson is not liking this pressure. It's very, very strong. Gustavo's very heavy from this position, from personal experience, especially. 
So let's just look, once again, that whole concept of using the side smash or the folding pass with the knee cut is really, really prevalent here. So he goes for the side smash and his opponent has to switch his hips to this other side. And being the high level competitor that Gustavo is, he's gonna allow that hip switch and just move right into this knee cut position. So one time no stopping here, just so you guys really understand what I mean. So he defends one attack, he goes, side, starts side smashing to the other side. Jackson tries to force his hips back to the other side, which is the proper defense from the situation. And look how Gustavo is going to use that, that momentum to carry him to the other side and insert into this really strong knee cut position. Now he's in this knee cut position and look at this overcorrection once again. Jackson threw his leg over because he's this is the, the proper defense. It's a, it's a, it's, this is what we call a leg pummel. It's a proper defense in order to, to, to stop this knee cut. So Jackson throws the leg over. Now this knee cut to this left side of Gustavo is kind of blocked, okay? So keep that in mind, and we'll see what Gustavo does next. Really beautiful. Let's, let's take a take an in-depth look at what's going on here. So Jackson is now stopping the knee cut with this leg pummel, okay? So the knee cut is now stopped. And now let's just take a quick look at this hand here of Gustavo on the on the on the leg of on the leg of Jackson. He's gonna start now passing to this other side, this opposite side of Jackson. That's exactly what you have to do. When one way is blocked, you go to the other way. Look how he, he takes his leg, and now he's walking to that other side. Now there's 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 very, very strong potential for a pass on this other side because Jackson's leg over here was overcorrected, it was thrown over, and he has no longer uh, any real defense on that opposite side. So now Gustavo is starting to walk, walk to that other side. So he attempts to walk to the other side, and look, another overcorrection. Jackson knew that Gustavo was about to walk to the other side, so he threw his other leg in play. So now both, like now his legs are crossed like this, and anytime your leg is crossed as the person on bottom, you are in big trouble, like very big trouble. Now Gustavo is simply able to just kind of do a, a quick thigh push to that side, the side that he wanted to pass with initially, and now Jackson has to roll and he has to turn on that instinct mode and just, just try and find something. And that's exactly what he does. He finds a strong, a decent, I would not, definitely say this is not a good half guard in this position, but it's decent. You know, it'll slow Gustavo down for a little bit longer. Let's just take a quick look at what Gustavo is doing in this situation. Gustavo now has a collar grip here and he's constantly trying to force Jackson's back to the mat in this situation. Jackson's, he wants Jackson bat, back on the mat so then he can start attaining a stronger cross face and then entering into a really strong knee cut uh, pressure passing situation, okay? And Gustavo defends, I mean, excuse me, Jackson defends well. And Gustavo kind of just steps over the legs of Jackson. So let's just take one more, one more look at this transition here. So Jackson like uh, kind of accepts it, accepts this leg to be loose and Gustavo just steps over. And now Gustavo is just going to switch to the knee cut on the other side. Again, that same concept of being able to pass to both sides is incredibly powerful. Okay, just look how now Jack, now Gustavo is using this kind of Leandro Lowe-esque, actually a uh, little bit of jiu-jitsu history. Uh, Gustavo Batista, uh, the guy in white, used to train at Leandro Lowe's Academy in Brazil. So he does have a very similar style game to Leandro, but I would say his pressure passing is actually way better than Leandro's, to be honest with you. And now he's going to use this, as you saw a second ago, see how he's using this kind of, it's hard to see, but you'll see just for a second. He's using this grip here, this, this kind of cross collar grip, not the most common grip that's used in passing, but he's going to use this, he's going to use his forearm to twist the opponent's head or Jackson's head to that other side. Look how he's twisting that hit, the head of, of Jackson to the other side. And that's, that's again, that, that similar concept that I've mentioned in multiple videos of the twisting of the spine. So as you can see here, Jackson's spine is completely twisted in the situation. Um, like his head is facing one way and then his, his body, because of Gustavo's knee, his, his Gustavo's kind of uh, knee cut cutting through this way, his body is forced, or his hips rather, are forced to this side. And that twists the spine of Jackson and makes him absolutely powerless and just, he's not able to do anything in the situation. Now the pass is, 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 is gonna happen. It's, it's, there's no stopping it, right? and then he stabilizes the pass. So let's watch one more time this whole clip, uh, just from the, this side, really all the way through, and just just take a look at all the amazing things that happen. I'm not gonna speak so much this time, but I really want you guys to just watch the amazing uh, pressure passing style that, that Gustavo Batista has. One of my favorite styles to watch, that's that's for sure. And one of my favorite styles to copy, I, I actually, I copy a lot of uh, 
of Gustavo's techniques. And having trained with him for so long, uh, I mean, his, his techniques are definitely, are my techniques, if that makes sense. Look at that amazing kind of push to the side. And Jackson here is very, very tight. Look at this constant, this heavy pressure the whole time. Jackson's in really big trouble here. He has to accept half guard on the other side. Gustavo was ready for that. He's done this kind of passing combination a thousand times. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, Gustavo is a good friend of mine. If you guys want to check out his passing techniques, um, I'm sure he has a DVD somewhere. You guys can find it. Um, I'm not getting paid for any of these videos. These are honestly just videos that I enjoy making and I'm, I'm just trying to help the jiu-jitsu community as much as possible. Um, trying to get them to understand more about high level jiu-jitsu and why it's so cool and why we should all watch it. So please like, comment, and subscribe on these videos and check out my DVD on the single X position. I will be making a passing DVD or course in the future on Jiu-Jitsu X so you guys can check that out as well. Uh, probably around January I would say. So thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh.